afternoon everybody. I hope you're okay. Um, we are in a different studio today because uh, I'm at home, I'm not at the um, class today. I hope you're all okay and we're going to get painting together. Now this is a class for any age group but if you'd like to um, grab all your bits I will run through those in a second. Um, I'll just... My technology is driving me crazy today because I really want to do this so that I can tilt my camera and have an overhead view for you so that you can see exactly what I'm doing rather than seeing me. Um, but it means I've had to use my phone, which is masking tape to a pole. So if it all <laughs> falls off, I apologise and you'll just have to bear with me a little bit. I will get the hang of it eventually. So um, we're going to start our live Facebook class in a second and we'll start painting but i just want to go through some of the resources with you today and i also want to turn the camera so you can see what i'm up to too um let's say i'm in the other studio better known as the dining room today i'm not at the um i'm not at the studio in town um and yes we will get started i haven't got my glamorous assistant with me either so i'm gonna have to like panic a little bit so i'm just gonna see if i can get comments up which i think i can in a second there we go yes i can oh sharice i've done it if you're watching um but do let me know if you're here do say hi and we will have some really nice fun today so what we're doing is we're going to be painting with coffee which i know sounds a little bit odd but it's a really good way of um, creating tone and looking at different distances and things like that with it. So, oh, hello, fine, somebody's there. Hi, Karen. Oh, thank you for joining us today. And Emma. Oh, it's lovely to have you on board. As say, this is the first adult class I've done. And the children one is a little bit easier because I can have my easel and paints. But I really want you to see what I'm doing today. So I've been panicking from about 11 o'clock with my, all my equipment which um, Sharice will understand what I've been going through because she sees my panic in the day. So what we're going to do is I'm going to turn you in a second. Hi, Barbara. Hi, Rita. <laughs> Yay. Nice to have you all here. I'm excited now. I feel a bit better. Oh, I can breathe. So yeah, it's just been, oh, I'm always stressed over technology. I'm not very good with it. So what we're going to do, paint with coffee. I have just some normal, nothing expensive just some um instant granules there i've also got a palette so i can mix the different values now i'm going to use the word value quite a lot today and it just means the depth of value is the deeper the color and then um the light the value obviously is the light of the color so value just means depth of color uh, i've got three different paint brushes i don't know whether i'll use them all but I've got three different. I'll definitely use a smaller one and I'll definitely use a bigger one for a wash. I've even got a huge one, but I, I say I'm not sure I'm going to use that. I've got some coffee already mixed in a mug. Not just for sipping, but um, for using as my wash. But I don't know what depth that is. I don't know what value that is, so I'm going to have to wait and see. And I've got a water pop just with clean water in. What I've done to start with is I've masking taped my paper to a board. So I've got a uh, Dial Rowney quality uh, watercolour paper here. And I've masked it all the way down. And then the other thing that I wanted to show you is the inspiration. So I found this, this card. I think it's just a plain artist card. And I just absolutely loved it. So this is what we're recreating, but we're going to do it in tone. So it will be one like that. And all these are just made of different strengths of the coffee and something that's called glazing, where we, we layer our watercolours, or in this case, our coffee is our watercolour. And we're going to use a bit of a dry brush to get this lovely effect at the bottom. So hopefully you'll be really pleased, but it, you know, it takes a few attempts to so just have a go, enjoy and relax. Oh, hi, Alison. Oh, it's so nice to see people on here. Cause otherwise I feel like I'm just talking to myself. Well, I feel like that anyway, but it's nice to have you there. 
So, um, we are going to get started. You know what, the phone is better actually because it does read my comments, whereas on the other one it doesn't so much on the laptop. So we're going to get started. I'm going to twist you so that you can see what I'm doing. So if you suddenly get a picture of the ceiling, don't worry, I will be with you. I just want to get it in position for you so that you can see exactly what I'm doing on the paper rather than looking at me. So just give me one second. I'm just going to turn you to the ceiling like this is where I worry that it's going to all fall out and fall down. There we go. Well, that's good. That's so far so good. That hasn't fallen off. Hopefully you can all hear me okay as well. So I haven't got any posh audio equipment. I've just got my phone. Okay, so you can definitely see that, which is good. And you can kind of see my setup a little bit if I move it all over slightly. There we go. So, the first thing that you need to do today to recreate this piece, or you don't have to follow me exactly, you can just have a play, but the first job is to masking tape all the way around. This is just DIY masking tape, it's nothing, it's nothing fancy at all. So, um, you know, hopefully you've got some in your garage or something like that. If not, you can buy it on Amazon or the range or wherever. And we even sell it if you need some. So we need to masking tape the whole paper all the way around. Now what I've also done, which you may see, is I've got a line where I've cut off my paper. Because I wanted to make this fairly square today. I wanted to do a squarer version. Um, it's completely up to you. I didn't need to use the whole piece of paper. So I've just put a bit of masking tape down here so that I can square it off. So I'm going to be working in this area today and we can then get started now with watercolors or anything that we need to mix a paint for even if it is with coffee it's a really good idea to kind of prep that before you even begin so in my palette I'm going to prep some colors um all gonna be brown obviously but I'm gonna prep the value of the color so I want some lighter washes and I want some deeper colour and then I even want almost pure wet coffee. And I'll show you what I mean by that later. Um, so I, I need different values to create those different tones and the depth that, that that will then give. So that is our first job, everybody. So we've got our lovely piece of paper prepped, hopefully. We've got a cup of coffee to drink and a cup of coffee to start our artwork. So I'm going to wet my brush to start with. I'm using just a, it's a graduate Dallarone brush. This one's an oval. Um, it really doesn't matter. I literally just grabbed anything. Uh, this is all actual wash brush. It's got long bristles, so that's quite good for watercolour, but I'm not doing anything too big. So really, I'd use this one for a, a really big piece. But today, because I'm going small, I'm going to start with this one. So I'm going to start, I'm actually going to use some coffee that I've already prepped and I'm going to pop it in a well in my, in my palette there. Now what another good thing is, because I've got this line here, this is going to be where I'm going to do my artwork, but this can be, this little section here can be my tester. So this can be the area where I test my tone and see how deep it is, see what the value of the colour is. So I can use this almost like a little mark making exercise and then this bit is your is your finished piece. And what's also nice is then once you've finished and you've taken the masking tape off, you can just literally peel off and cut, cut it off. So, you, um, so you've got your piece to start with. So I'll just start by adding my first depth of colour. So that's my coffee that I've just pre-mixed with some hot water. You don't need hot water for the coffee to dissolve. Um, so I know then that that is about that depth. Now that is great for a wash. You can barely see it on my camera, but that's kind of a good thing. If I bring it a bit closer, you'll be able to see it better. That's gonna be really good for our distance. And then I need to make that deeper. So what I'm going to do, is I'm going to get some more coffee, 
pop it in a pop it in a separate well so I want to leave that one because I know what it is and then I'm going to add more coffee to it so I'm picking up my little coffee pot of instant coffee and I'm just going to mix that in I would advise you not to do this over your paper but I want to show you everything so and this will give you a different depth so you can then make sure with the coffee today um, it's really dissolved and just before you even apply it onto your paper double check that it's not on you know little granules aren't on your brush because obviously that will make a darker mark you want it to have dissolved nicely and then you can put that on there just to see if it's any darker hopefully it will be so we've got this graduation now we've got the lighter wash and we've got the the slightly darker one so I'm going to repeat that process so I'm making all these different values of color and this is great because it will be my prep so I know then that when I come to do my piece I've got a lighter version I've got a darker version and then I've got a really rich tone um, for my final layers of the painting so again I'm just picking up my pre-made coffee which was just how you'd normally make a couple of coffee like a table you know a teaspoon of coffee in, in some hot water. If you haven't got these resources ready yet, don't worry. You can always rewind the video um, and then start again with me. So I'm going to add some more to this so I want it to be deeper. <clears throat> so I'm just straight from the brush into my well and mixing it a little bit darker. So I'm going to create three tones today for the landscape and what I'm then going to do is just add a little bit of pure coffee without me mixing and put that in a well as well well as well so you can test to see if that's darker mm, not really I'm going to go a little bit darker than that so I'm adding a bit more coffee so say you want three different tones today to recreate this lovely piece but even if you don't create a piece of artwork today and you just play around with the tones on the paper like this, that would be just as useful. That's good, that's looking good. And then finally, so hopefully you can see that it's gradually getting darker. My final one, I'm not gonna go for my coffee, my pre-made coffee. I'm literally just going to go straight into the coffee with my brush and um, have a very dry a dry bit it might be a bit lumpy please don't worry you kind of need that so you need this bit to kind of half dissolve this is going to be your strongest section so just like with watercolor the more water we add to our paint the lighter the value and the, the more paint we have the less water the more pure paint, the deeper the value. So as you can see from my palette, I've got my one I originally started with. So it's all very organized. One that I originally started with, which was just a normal cup of coffee. And then I've got made that darker, made it even richer and darker. And then finally, almost pure coffee, which still has the coffee granules in it. Okay, and I'll show you what that looks like. I'm just gonna switch my brush for that day. And I'll show you what effect we can get with that. So you can see. Now if there's any children joining in today, um, it is very technical, but you can still have fun joining in and having a go. So with that, I can make a really rich, line so I'm just picking up the little dry bits of coffee and making a nice so this is great for mark making we can do lots of marks and we're going to use what's called a dry brush oh I tell you what I have forgotten this is where Sharice comes in very very handy and is lovely I've forgotten my um kitchen paper so <coughs> let me just quickly grab that because I can see it here we go so I've got a little bit of kitchen roll. 
for drying my brush because we're going to do like a very we're going to do an area of texture where the water like um where the light is reflecting off the water and to do that we're going to need our brush so once we've dipped it in the coffee we're going to dry our brush a little bit by dabbing it on the kitchen paper and then we can drag that brush and that will make a really nice mark so here are our different values and our different marks today. I'll bring it a little bit closer. And I'll just do that one again so you can see. So I've picked up a little bit of coffee on my paintbrush. I've dried it on the kitchen paper, not completely, but just a little bit so that it's, it's not wet, basically. And then using the flat of my brush, not the point, I've kind of scrubbed. You can hear it. And it, what it does is it just picks up certain at certain areas and then leaves others and it just creates a really nice texture, especially for water. So there are little practice pieces. Let's get painting. Let's have a go. So we're going to start, I'm going to grab my bigger brush. I'm going to use this one. Um, I'm just going to make sure it's clean of coffee because obviously that will change the depth. Just like it would if you had paint on your brush. And the first one I'm going to go for, we're going to put in the sky. The first one we're going to go for is the light one. So we're going to go with watercolour and with this exercise today, we go light to dark. <laughs> I do miss you. <laughs> I do miss you. Uh, but um, it just works in at home today with trouble being on half term and stuff. Plus, I don't have granulated coffee at the studio. I have a bit of posher coffee. I can't use that. <laughs> okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to go probably quite far down maybe like a third of the way down with a sky. Now, if you want to, but you don't have to, you can leave a couple of gaps for clouds. So we work light to dark. So the paper is going to be your lightest thing today. Um, so that's the white of the paper. So if you want to make clouds, then just leave little areas white. But we're going to use this lovely wash. So we know what that, that looked like because it was up here. If you want it even lighter, then obviously add a little bit more water to it. But I'm happy with that. I'm going to go for it. So I'm picking up a nice amount of water on my brush. I'm not doing a wet in wet technique. I'm just doing a wet in dry, which means I've got my wet paint and I'm applying it to the dry paper. Um, we're not going to have any bleeding or anything like that. It's all about glazing and layering today. Hello, talk of trouble. Um, so I'm going to put that in. So I'm going to start at the top just with a nice wash. As I say, if you want to, you can leave some clouds. Let's <clears throat> bring it down. Okay, and that's it. Now, unfortunately, with watercolour, what we must do is just let that sit and let that dry. Now, you can see how light it is. <clears throat> If I just bring it a little bit closer to you. I haven't really got many clouds. I've got some edge of clouds here. If you want to do um, a different cloud technique, grab some of your kitchen paper. You can scrunch it up. And you can kind of pick off the paint by dabbing like this. So we're just doing a really nice loose sky to start us off. So I'll bring it a bit closer so you can see. So there's just that suggestion of clouds there. Okay, and as I say, we're just gonna waft that. I'm gonna chat to Isla because she's just arrived and looking at me as if to say, I need something. Are you okay? No, I'm just looking right You can come and sit with me if you like. I just haven't got the resources for you to join in. Okay, and it's different today because people can't see me, but they can see our what we're up to. Okay, so once you're happy, it needs to be kind of touch dry. It really won't take too long. 
to be touch dry. We're going to put the first set of mountains in. Now these are the ones in the background, so these are right in the distance, so we don't want to go much darker. We're gradually getting darker as we come to the to come to the foreground. So the background, all the way in the back, is going to be um, really, really light. And then as it comes forward, and as we do the trees, we're going to do some layering. And I'll just bring that over here for you. Okay. So I'm going to pick up some more coffee. I'm going to go for my slightly darker coffee, the value, the second of the values. And I'm going to get a really nice mountainous scene in there. So I'm going to start from one corner and just do a few bumps. All the way down like that. I'm just going to get that how I want it. And I've just added a little bit of a my uh, washy colour to the bottom here just to bring it down slightly. Just so it fades a little bit as we come down. So that's my first stage with my coffee. So this is where we've used a really light tone to start with. So we're just using one colour, just one colour, but we're creating all this nice, lovely depth. Okay, so I'm just going to let that dry for a little bit. Gives everyone time to kind of catch up. And um, hopefully you will have, you'll notice that you've got this lovely edge coming in the background here for your first mountain. You could do this in any colour. So if you wanted to switch to paint at some point, you could just do it in blues. You could, well, this one's very bluey actually, the inspiration piece that I found. I think this card was in Morrison's the other day. It was lovely. Couldn't resist having a go. So I've brought that down. So now, hopefully, if we don't wait for these layers to dry, what happens is you lose them. So they start just to wash into the last one. You want a nice hard... Oh, Diane, hello. Oh, I just spotted you. Um, hope you're okay. I haven't seen you for ages. <laughs> hope you're both okay. Hope Sue's okay as well. Um, so... If you add if you add anything onto each layer of your watercolour when it's still wet, then obviously it's just gonna blend together. You want it to be you want it to be dry and that creates what's called a glaze, it will glaze over. So you'll see the the edges and things like that, which are lovely. So I've got my sky, I've got my first mountain, and then what I'm going to do is I'm gonna bring another mountain in, perhaps a little bit lower, over this way, with a slightly darker value. So I'm going to go back to my brush. So I'm using this one still, haven't swapped. So I had my lightest, which was my background. I'm not going to use that now. I had my medium one here, and I'm going to go even darker because we're starting to bring these mountains closer to us. I'm going to pick up some paint and some coffee. Goes with saying that. And pick up some coffee, and I'm just going to bring this one. Let me do it a little bit. Mm, no, actually. Uh, I'm going to go there. So let's get a nice, this one's going to be quite. And just taper it a little bit at the bottom here. Now, with this one, if this is your mountain that you want as your last one in the front, you're going to need a really nice straight line with your brush for where the water is. Now, I'm going to pop, I'm actually, I'm going to just pop another one in 
just tucked behind here over the top. Now sat. You don't have to do this, you can just stick to two or three. And I'm going to let that go. I'm just being careful around the edge because I don't want it to look like one round. There we go, that's better. <clears throat> and just straighten that up again. So the bottom needs to be really lovely and straight. If it's not, if just um, pop that in there like that. Okay, so we've got, hopefully, what you can see now is, not, is like a bit of perspective going on, a bit of distance. I'll bring it a little bit closer for you. So we've got the sky, the mountain in the background. We've almost got, because it, it's just how it's happened, um, it's not deliberate. I seem to have this lovely haze on the mountains at the back here. And then I've got one here, and then I've got the darkest of my coffee. So lots of coffee has been added to that one for the getting closer to us, the foreground there. <clears throat> I'm quite pleased with that so far. I hope you're pleased with yours. If you're not sure um, and you're thinking, oh, I don't know, I don't know what I'm doing. A few little tips with watercolour. Number one is your brush, the, the amount of water you use is quite important. So if your brush is dripping and puddling and you know, then it's, you've used too much water. If it's dragging um, and creating like a scratchy, like this one, a scratchy texture, then not enough water has been used. So it's, it's important with watercolour that you're using the right brush um, for the area of coverage and um, that you're getting the quantity of water right and it does take practice but you know what it doesn't take that much practice because once you do it regularly enough and do it you know um, you, you kind of get used to it so don't let that put you off if it's puddling everywhere and you think oh just start again doesn't matter and just play play around with it and see what effects you like so I've got these bits again. We're just waiting for them to dry. The other thing with watercolor is you can't you can't always dry them with a hairdryer for speed. I do that with my acrylics, um, dry them fast so I can work on layers. But with watercolor or with this piece, which is similar to watercolor, unfortunately you have to be patient and uh, and relaxed. <laughs> Danny, <laughs> I can see that potato shapes are not needed. I've got a friend that thinks all I do every day is cut and stick and cut out potatoes. Hopefully, Danny, you'll see that that isn't the case now. Hope you're right, by the way. So what we're going to do now is we're going to pop in our water. We're gonna start at the back here and we're going to need to go back to our kind of mid-ground, um, this one, the not watery one. So we've got our weaker valley here, our darkest valley here, our practically dry bit here. We want this middle one here. So that's what we're going to use. I'm going to swap my brush as well. So I'm going to use a different brush now because I want to be a little bit more careful. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to use this dry brush technique. So we want to pick up some of our coffee. But for the water, for this time, we don't want to create a, wa a proper wash. We want it to be a little bit drier. So I'm just my phone's gradually flipping. I might just help. Hopefully that's a bit better. Let's have a little look. Yes, it is. Getting closer and closer to my lap as opposed to the paper. So I've picked up my mid value. So not the weakest one, not the darkest one, certainly not the dry one. I've gone for the mid tone. 
and I'm going to dry it a little bit on my on my kitchen paper and we, I'm going to use a flat I'm going to use all of the brush to create this so I'm just going to scratch over it will be very subtle and you might need to go over it again so don't worry I'm also going to make sure that I leave almost a hum of white between the bottom of the mountain there and my water So this creates a lovely effect. Now remember, if you're not sure and you're worried, do it on your test a bit instead. If you're thinking, oh, this isn't gonna work. Move to your tester part. So I've just left a little bit of a white line. So I've hardly got any paint on my brush whatsoever. So Alex, the brushes I'm using, I've got, I just use, I'm a bit of a Dala Rowney fan because one, they're really inexpensive. And secondly, um, they do the job. And the thing is, the, the worst, the only thing that I find really frustrating with brushes is uh, when the hair comes out, when you, when you get little bits of hair on your, on your paper from the brushes. That means that they're a really, really poor quality. Um, so it's always better to kind of go up from that. But the ones I've used today is I've used an oval wash brush, which is a graduate Dala Rowney brush. And then I've swapped to, oh, well, this isn't even Dala Rowney. This is a cheap um, student make called Major Brushes um, that I get from a wholesaler but I'm sure major brushes you can get from other places like Amazon and things or from me if you want to buy some and I'm using a size 8. Those of you in my watercolour class will know that I tend to stick to a size 6 for most things but because we're doing a quite a large washy area today I've gone for my oval brush size 1 and this is just a really you know, student student grade brush, size eight. Lots of artists are a bit of hoarders when it, when it comes to paint brushes. They um, seem to collect them, but you can do that. But then I only find I use a couple anyway. I use these for acrylic. I use them for watercolor. I wouldn't use them for oil because they'd wreck quite quickly. But um, yeah, so that's what I'm using. Okay, so I've got my dry water. I've got all these lovely tones working backwards. I hope you've been able to create those. And as always, please do send me your work because I love to see it. Or if you're thinking, oh, I'm struggling on this bit, send me a message and I'll get back to you. I'll, I'll help you if I can. Um, I'm certainly no expert when it comes to watercolour. Acrylics is my thing. Um, that's where I get commissions and that's where I like to do it for myself and things like that. Watercolour. I've learned over time, my gran taught me when I was very little, and I've learned over time kind of how I like to do it. But um, it is with watercolour, it's just practice. The water bit again. Oh, okay, so the dry brush. No problem, Alison. So, because um, everyone's probably just about catching up, we need to let it dry anyway. So with the water, all I did... I'll do it again, but I'll move my paper over, so I'll do it on this little rough bit. Um, using my mid value that I created, so not the washy one, not the, not the rich one, certainly not the dry coffee one, the middle tone, I literally just picked up some of that colour onto my brush. Um, and then I dried it on my kitchen roll. Not completely but just to kind of suck a bit of the water up. And then, nice and horizontal, not at a point, just scrub almost. You just want to, this paper that I have, I'm just thinking of what paper you might have. This paper that I've got is a cold press textured paper. And the reason I like textured paper in my watercolor, not the smooth, is because I can do things like this. It allows me to play with textures. It allows me to, 
um, not apply too much paint and do different things. So I just literally let the brush pick up certain areas and not pick up others. So I just let it catch wherever. So where it catches the paper, that's great. And where it doesn't, I'll leave it. So then you get this lovely kind of shimmery water effect, um, which is perfect. Now, are you ready for the scariest bit of them all? I did this. I had a 40th birthday party. Well, not me. Mine's next year. I'll be 40 next year. Um, I had a 40th um, birthday party for uh, some lovely ladies. It was so much fun on Friday night. They booked me for um, a sip and paint night. And uh, and we were we were doing this not not this but something similar and it was just it just worked like a treat it's absolutely brilliant i was really really pleased so where are we at oh and yeah that's what i was gonna say i almost forgot what i was gonna say the hardest bit of that was the reflections so we're going to try and create a reflection in the water of these lovely um mountains and uh, it is the scariest bit because all this lovely work that we've just done, we're going to paint over it. So we're going to create this lovely kind of um, reflection as if that mountain is in there. So we want to go for our weakest value for this. So we're going to, um, if it's dry, I'm kind of hesitating because I want to make sure your piece of work is dry before we do any more. Um, we're going to add the reflection in the bottom here. So mine comes quite low today. It's just how I've created it. I've picked up my lightest value and I'm just going to, I'm still going to leave a little bit of a line, a white line between, and I'm just going to mimic this shape that I've got, but in the lightest value. This is going to create the reflection in the water. So all those lovely marks we've just made are kind of going to vanish a little bit. That doesn't matter. I'm just going to go over the top. Because hopefully, if you've got a nice um, dry water underneath our water painting underneath, you'll kind of see through it anyway. So it just creates a little shadow in the water. I'm just going to deepen this line a little bit with a little more... So I don't know whether you can see that, but I've left a white space between my mountain and the water, and then I've just mirrored the shape. And underneath, you can still see my dry brush. That's why it's really important to do the dry marks of your water first, because then you get that lovely ripple effect underneath. I hope that makes sense. I feel like I'm not really making sense anymore. <laughs> okay how do you turn comments off oh I'm not sure Emma um I think on my computer I can see your I can see comments I think if you um there's like a little arrow next to the notifications I think you can click let me test it. I think you can click on that. Oh, maybe not. Um, I don't know. I don't know whether event. Oh, I tell you what you can do. If you hover over the hover over the picture, you might be able to enter full screen. Yeah, that's done it for me. I don't know whether you're on a phone or a laptop. Um, but if you hover over. You might be able to see it better and turn off the comments there <clears throat> okay so hopefully we are all dry and we are actually nearly finished today We're, we've nearly completed our piece the last and final job is just adding some trees in there um, you can go for a smaller brush now if you want to I'm gonna go I'm gonna swap to a size 2 but only because I want the marks of my brush I want the pressure of my brush to make the marks of the trees. Now you don't have to do this. Oh, thanks, Emma. Ah, another Emma. Um, you don't have to do it like this if you don't want to. You could actually um, 
I don't know whether anyone watches Bob Ross, but if you're if you're um, an artist who practices this all the time, you could always use a fan brush to create some um, trees. But you want the trees in the background to be smaller for distance and the ones in the foreground to be slightly bigger and darker. And that's the important thing. And this is where we're going to go for our driest of coffee. OK, so I don't need the light value anymore. I don't need... The medium value and I don't need the darkest value I'm going to go for this kind of dry dry coffee now so I'm just going to pick up some of it on my brush and as I say I was going I'm going to use the pressure of my brush to create these marks so I'll show you on my little tester side what I mean you could paint these in like that if you wanted to or you can just press with your brush and let the water do its thing so I'm starting from the tip of my brush to the bottom and I'm kind of going like this in this motion so that my brush does all the work for me I'll do them a little bit so I can even do that with a larger brush as well just to show you So we can go, I bet a lot of you have forgotten that we're actually using coffee. I know what I did for a minute. Um, so we could paint them in, like draw them as if we're colouring them in, like that, if you'd like that shape. Or we can use the pressure and the actual brush shape to create these trees. So I'm going from tip of the brush, pressing down and lifting off pressure of the rush lifting down so what we're going to do is we're going to pop these over the top of our this is a bit too big a brush actually because it's flicking I don't want it to flick so I'm going to swap again use the pressure of our brush but if you're not comfortable with doing that yet because there is a bit of a knack to it and sometimes even I guess it completely wrong um you can just paint them in if you don't like where the, where the um, coffee is sitting, if you feel like you can always drag it down a little bit as well if you want to. So we're going to create some nice trees. So starting in the background, I'm going to do these trees quite tiny. Um, just as a suggestion, don't worry if it doesn't look very dark at the moment either. Because... These are all in the distance. And you can put as many in as you like. I would do less in the background if I was you and more in the foreground, but it all depends what you want, you know, you play around with it and see what you like. And then I'm gonna pop some more. Mm, I like my little hazy bit, so I'm not going to do it there. I'm definitely going to come over here. I'm just going to pick up some more coffee into my dry mix because it's not quite dark enough. So I'm adding more coffee to get a darker value. Are you right, sweetie? Yeah. I'm going to have a baby. Oh, are you? Yeah. I'm just putting this in. Random trees. I might even put a little bush or a gathering of trees down here. I'm just being very careful not to go into that white line. I need that white line for so they're not exact trees, they're not precise drawings of trees, they're just like um they're just suggestions, just to give a feel of the trees in there. Um, you can put as many as you like, and you'll notice that it dries really nicely as well. So if you want to soften any areas or you want to make it a little bit lighter, you can always just go for a damp brush, not wet, a damp brush. And just pick any colour off. 
that you don't want. So I'm just going over these back ones a little bit. And then I'm going to do these ones at the front. So this one actually comes up above the mountain here. Remember, these ones can be nice and big. If you don't feel like your colour is deep enough for this, um, just add more coffee, dry coffee, straight in, and use that to paint from. Get it a little bit wet, but then just don't mix it as much. And you can get a nice deep value. <clears throat> And just have fun dotting them about they can go absolutely anywhere you can go at the bottom near your water i hope you managed to turn the car i hope you're able to see it emma a bit better So I'm just adding some depth, some different points of interest, like some trees, maybe some bushes, just along this edge here, making sure that it's nice and dark at the, in this area. <laughs> I can hear Isla singing away. On Wednesday this week, we've got our children's class, which is portraiture. Um, we are, we're not drawing from life, so it's very much, you know, where everything goes in terms of positions of the eyes and, you know, let, letting them make up anybody really. So I've also just like gone over my horizon a little bit. Just that, that line, that straight line that we put in. I just kind of brought that in there a little bit. And once you're happy with the amount of trees you've got, I want them to look like they're coming down the hillside. Don't make them too regimented either. Be, be a bit free with them. Your house is going to smell all lovely and cough of coffee today. But this is a great way of just practicing, practicing the techniques, giving it a go. I hope you're all finding it nice and relaxing and <laughs> not stressing about it because it's really. What's nice about Facebook Live is um, no one can see your work, it is just for you. And hopefully you'll be pleased with it at the end. Put a few in there. And then the, the, heart, the next bit, the final bit, is just to reflect those in the water. So I'm going to pick up my weakest value for this. My weakest value of coffee that I made at the start. And do you see why it's, I hope you see why, it's important to make those values before you start painting. Because if you, if you need to like mix it as you go, it's a bit of a nightmare. You kind of, with oil painting it's the same. It's really good to be prepped and have everything that you need before you even begin. Um, so getting those colours in there. So I'm just going to deepen this a little bit at the bottom. Just get a bit of a harsher line so it's a bit more obvious. And then I'm going to put in some of those trees, trying to mimic where they go very lightly. So a mirror image. 
Jane Wraith, it's not precise. I mean, no one's going to be measuring. Making that a little bit darker. If you feel you've got too much, like mine's just gone a bit blobby there, which I don't like. So I'm going to dry my brush completely, absolutely, really, really dry, and just suck up some of that colour and some of that water that I've done because I didn't like that. Some people think that you can't correct watercolour. It is the hardest of medium to correct or, you know, to erase mistakes. But we can do it kind of to a degree. We can use water and a dry brush to kind of suck up the colour. Um, we can kind of get round it. But not in the same way as um, acrylic where we can just, you know, oops, I've painted that black. Let's just go over it in white again. <clears throat> it's a little less forgiving. Are you okay? Um, um, towel. You can use a tea towel if you want to do, baby. No, I'm, I'm, I'm not a towel. I'm trying to dry her, but all the wetness of the towel when I put her on made a puddle on the floor. Oh, okay. I don't know how to really fix it, because I don't know which will come out with water, which will suck the water up. Any of them. Any of them, Poppet. Just grab a towel. There is quite a big puddle on the floor. That's okay. You can always ask Will to help you. Yeah. I'm nearly done. I just want to make sure we're all... That hasn't worked very well down here. I don't know whether you can see. I've made a bit of a mistake down here. Just going to bring that over a little bit, just to mirror. Yeah, it hasn't come out how I want to. So rather than play with it, which I'm very tempted to do, I'm just going to leave it until it's dry and then put my trees over the top. So it's just putting in these trees, not as deep as you were doing, and just mirroring, mirroring them. That's a bit better, almost, it's still a bit. There we go. I'm just gonna go over a line over here, just for my water, just to deepen it a little bit at the back. But now I really am just playing around with it, to be honest. And I think I'm going to leave it there. So as I say, once you're finished, you can tear off the masking tape. If you feel like the masking tape is um, pulling, up, pulling up your paper, just use a hairdryer to... It will just melt the glue a little bit and then it will come off a lot easier. So... I hope you've enjoyed our painting with coffee and I hope you feel like you've learnt something with regards to tones and how we can use those. And uh, enjoy, have another play and do send me your lovely work because um, I absolutely love seeing it. I'll see if I can turn my camera a little bit so you can, I can say bye to you properly. Ooh. Ooh, it's my kitchen. Oh, I don't know whether I can do it. Yes, I can. There we go. Ooh. Hello. So, that is painting with coffee today. Oh, it's tight now. Oh, there we go. And well done, everybody. So, I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you've learned a little bit. Or at least I hope you've zoned out and just had a little bit of practice. And, uh, oh, I'm glad it was relaxing. Good. And do just, just keep going and ticks. It's all about, it just, you get the hang of it. It's, um, the more you do it, the more you play around. And as I say, don't waste your paints. Do it with something like coffee and it will help you massively. 
So uh, just have a play, enjoy and send me your work. And if you're joining me on Wednesday, we only need paper, pencil and a rubber if you want to. Um, and we're going to do portraiture. And then I'll be here next week. We'll do a fun acrylic piece if you want to join me. So you'll need some acrylic paints and um, some paper, brushes, water pot. So that's next Monday at one o'clock. And thank you very much. Have a lovely week and I hopefully see you Wednesday.